Macroeconomics continued. Pork barreling and budgets. So for your do now for today's major activity, and again, I will be looking at this, name three things the government, one, should spend money on, right? And three things you think it definitely should not spend money on, right? So once we finish, this could be both, this could either be nowadays in particular, or it could be a general rule. Right. Um, think about things, you know, that governments may typically spend money on, right? The military, uh, social welfare, the arts, the sciences. Um, do you think those are good uses of public money? Or maybe you think maybe we need to spend less on one of these things, or none at all. Maybe there's some things you think, look, the government should be spending money on that it really isn't right now. Or vice versa, maybe there's something that we're not spending money on right now, and you're like, yeah, you know, that definitely needs to stay that way, you know. We we don't currently spend money on it, and it's something we definitely shouldn't start spending money on. Doesn't matter. Now, pork barreling. What is pork barreling per se? So pork barreling refers to spending on local projects, often of a dubious nature, which is hidden inside of a law. See, the truth is, when you look at a law, an actual, the way it's written out in Congress, a bill which becomes a law, it's often a staggeringly long document. And even many people in Congress themselves, who most of whom are trained lawyers, will admit that they haven't read every single part and parcel page of the bill. So often it's very easy for congressional representatives or senators to hide little local projects in the bill, right? It'll say, oh, and part of the bill will include a allowance of a certain amount of money for a bridge somewhere. Famously, it was Alaska's Bridge to Nowhere, which was hidden inside of a larger highway bill at the time. You know, it allotted a certain amount of... Um, Several million dollars for the construction of a bridge that would link a very small island community in Alaska with the mainland. Currently, this community makes use of a ferry to move back and forth. But originally, but there was talk of having a bridge constructed, which would connect the island community to the Alaskan mainland. Now, congressmen often include such legislation in order to benefit their supporters. So this can include their constituents. So, for example... Gentleman, the representative from Alaska, definitely thought he was winning some major brownie points with his constituents. Hey, look at the money for this local building project that I was able to bring back from my time in Washington, right? I clearly have your best interests at heart. I got the rest of Congress to put this in a national highway bill. It can also be that congressmen reward their supporters, those who give money to their re-election campaigns, right, might be rewarded by this. So, somewhere in the midst of a bill, there might be something that gives a contract to a certain firm or approves a tax cut for a certain industry. And it's very likely that in many cases, those who push for such things, it's because these companies often have some tie to them, often in the form of being campaign donors. So let's talk about the congressional budget, right? A.K.A. what does Congress spend? So the first thing you need to understand is there's two types of spending. Mandatory spending and discretionary spending. Mandatory spending includes entitlement programs. These are things where the government has already promised to, by law, to pay these things. Things like uh, Social Security, Medicare, Veterans Benefits, and the National Debt. These are all examples of mandatory spending. These are things you have to make payments on as Congress. You don't have a choice, right? There's no option where Congress gets to say, yeah, we're just not paying down the debt right now. Or we're just going to cancel veterans' benefits. We're just going to cancel Social Security. That's legally not on the table unless specific laws are drafted to get rid of those programs. But in a typical budget meeting, Congress can't just slash the budget for these things. 
Discretionary spending is a little different. This includes defense, science, education, etc. These items are allocated by Congress, uh, but Congress can choose not to spend the money. So in other words, these are all things that fall within the power of Congress to decide how much they want to spend on any of these things, if at all. So we're going to look at some examples. Now, the, the data I have for you is a little old. This is like 2017 data I'm going to show you. So the data itself is about three years old now. So expect that the current budget is going to be worse. Here we go. So this was the federal budget back in 2017. And you'll notice the, the blue wheel over here represents mandatory spending. So it shows you what constitutes mandatory spending in the dark blue and what constitutes discretionary spending over here in the light blue. So you'll notice mandatory spending includes things like uh, uh, Social Security and stuff like that. And also you have the revenue. Now you'll notice the spending, the total spending in 2017 uh, amounted to $4.0 trillion, right? Not millions, not billions, trillions. Four trillions, to be more precise. Now, that's not, now the U.S. government, its revenues totaled $3.3 trillion. So that is point zero point seven trillion, or another way to write that is seven hundred billion that was added to the national debt, right? That's seven billion dollars, seven hundred billion dollars that we as a nation spent in twenty seventeen that we did not have. Now, let's take a closer look at mandatory spending. So, $2.5 trillion of that was, um, that's the total that amounted to the mandatory spending. Out of, so, out of that $4.0 trillion, $2.5 trillion was mandated by law. Now, $1.6 trillion out of that $2.5 trillion was for Social Security and Medicare. So, right there, that's how it right. Social Security and Medicare, a.k.a. That's government money allocated out to the elderly, dependent children, and disabled people. That's $1.6 trillion. That's what that is. Now, in terms of the gross domestic product, how much money the U.S. brings in, the economy brings in, it represents 13.1% of our GDP. And 11.2% average mandatory spending as a percentage of gross domestic product between 1997 and 2016. So we were above the average. We spent a little more than normal. Now... If we look at mandatory spending in 2017, we get some interesting figures here. So for major health programs, we spent, now this is given in billions of dollars. So we spent 1.14 trillion is what, that's the way they're saying it, uh, dollars on health in total. Biggest percentage of mandatory spending. Of that, $702 billion was for Medicare. $375 billion was for Medicaid. That's for the poor and the disadvantaged. And $64 billion went towards other major health care programs. Also, just a note, nowhere are they explain it. That's $64 billion. That is just such a small percentage of the spending... They don't even have time to break it down for you exactly what that is. $939 billion is what we spent on Social Security. Of that, most of it, $796 billion, that was for old age and survivor's insurance. Old age meaning you personally worked, put into Social Security all those years. That's yours. Survivor's benefits means maybe you did, but your spouse didn't. So when you die, your spouse gets a certain percentage 
for the rest of their life. Another $143 billion was for disability insurance. Now, income security programs. Right, this is your, includes things like earned income, child, and other tax credits. That's $83 billion. $70 billion for SNAP, Supplemental Nutrition in Assistance Programs. So that's the, the food stamps you sometimes hear folks debating about. That's what that is, $70 billion. 55 is for um, supplemental security income. And unemployment compensation is 51, $55 billion. Now, we look here at the federal uh, civilian and military retirement is $163 billion in 2017. $101 billion for civilians, $58 billion towards military retirements, and $4 billion goes to other retirements that are, I guess, somehow neither civilian nor military. Okay. Uh, 105 billion went to veterans' benefits, of which 86 was paid as income security to veterans. 86 billion. The other 19 was other. And then 130 billion is just for other programs that are mandated by law. Now, this is offset by funds collected by the government agencies uh, and accounts in the public that are credited as an offset to gross spending. So we did save two hundred and fifty three billion off of that. Now let's take a closer look at discretionary spending. So discretionary spending back in twenty seventeen amounted to one point two trillion. And the amount spent on national defense uh which amounted for nearly half of that, aka 0 0.6 trillion or 600 million dollars is what we spent on the military. Now, in one breath, that may not sound, remember, that is still less than we spent on Medicare, right? We spent 702 billion on Medicare, only 600 billion on the military. Now, Trends in discretionary spending. If we're looking at the years, every seven years, you'll notice here, in 1997, when they first started doing the survey, our discretionary and mandatory spending were roughly matched. Oh, no, this is discretionary spending. This is our defense versus non-defense. So they were roughly matched. We spent about $3.2 uh, on Three point two, you know, three point two billion or whatever on each one, right? Then in two thousand two, our defense was still higher than our non-defense. By two thousand seven, two thousand twelve, our defense had started to outpace our uh, non-defense. By the time we get to twenty seventeen, they're about equal, but a little bit more for the non-defense. So discretionary spending in 2017, this is given in billions of dollars. So $590 billion went to defense. And that included operations and maintenance is $245 billion. $138 billion went to military personnel. $104 billion for recruitment. That means getting people to join the military. So just to, right? So $104 billion just to try and get people to sign up versus how much versus 138 billion to actually pay all the people that are there 68 billion went into research development testing and evaluation and 35 billion was for other which includes spending for military construction family housing and some defense related activities by agencies other than the department of defense such as the atomic energy activities of the department of energy the non-defense sector is also very revealing. Of the $610 billion in non-defense in 2017, $93 billion to education, transportation, $92 billion to education, $72 to veterans benefits and services, $67 to income security, $60 to health, $55 to administration of justice, $51 to international affairs, 
120 to other, which includes natural resources.